Welcome, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can integrate this Rive animation to create a pull to refresh experience that's uh, incredibly unique. As you can see, once uh, you start dragging, the animation starts playing, and these are all controlled through inputs that we will show you how to use in this video. But if you reach a certain threshold, uh, so a drag target, then the animation goes into a new state. And as you can see, it's it's now ready to uh, fire the arrow, which means like once I let go now, new data will be loaded or some new refresh action will take place. So I'm letting go and new animation states, data is loaded and the animation is finished. And you have control over those states, how long they should be playing um, to basically have a nice pull to refresh indication of when data is loaded. And uh, this animation was made by Michael and he made a series of videos showing you how you can integrate this state machine and what you need to know from the Rive editor perspective to create something like this. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on the Jetpack Compose implementation details. We also have a number of other videos showing you how to do them for different platforms. The code for this is open source, so please feel free to uh, just download that and get started. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, just the fundamental concepts, I guess, of how you would create something like this. Uh, we're not going to be typing out everything line by line. Instead, I'm just going to be showing you uh, what you need to know from a coding perspective and a Rive state machine perspective uh, to integrate something like this. With that all said, I think we're ready to actually just jump into the code and get started. Um, before we go into more of the actual implementations, what you do need to be aware of is, uh, I guess, the setup steps to incorporate Rive in an Android project, especially for Jetpack Compose. And um, we'll take a look at all of that now. The first thing you'll need to do is in your build.gradle file, you'll need to add some dependencies. So be sure to add the latest version of the Rive Android uh, runtime. We have runtimes for various different platforms. You will need this to be able to run Rive on Android. Please note that if you want to follow this tutorial exactly, or if you just pull the code from GitHub, uh, you may want to use the version noted here. Uh, version 5.0.1, let me just zoom in. Then also you'll need to add the Android X startup startup runtime um, dependency, as this is needed uh, to just initialize Rive once the application opens. Once you've added these implementations and you've uh, synced your Gradle build, then you can open Android manifest and you'll need to add this section in the application section, this provider. And uh, this is what the uh, initialization step is that I mentioned. Here we are initializing Rive uh, for our project. You can also implement this in a different way. Uh, you can do it at runtime, or I mean through code. And to do that, uh, I do recommend you go to the Android documentation on Rive's website. Here we have getting started instructions uh, working with uh, Rive on various different runtimes. And you'll see uh, here's the initialization, uh, initializing section. And as an alternative to using the provider, you can also uh, just call Rive in it and pass in the context. But for this example, we will use the provider approach. With that being done, you'll now need to ensure that you've included the Rive animation as an asset uh, that you want to display. As you can see, we have, uh, we're making use of the uh, raw assets directory and we added this pull to refresh use case .rev. And you can get that from the editor. So once you are in the editor, there's a share option at the top and just click download for runtime and that will give you the .riv file with all of the information needed to display the animation. And then that is that for the initialization. Uh, let's jump into what we need to do to actually display a Rive animation. Currently we have the full thing set up, but let's just boil it down to the basics first and just show a uh, Rive animation. And the name for that is Composable Rive Animation. So let me just add that. Okay, and let's just do a restart and see what the animation looks like in its plain form. As you can see, now we are just displaying a Rive animation. 
and we're doing that through an Android view. So if we take a look at the custom composable uh, that is available in this class, it's called Composable Arrive Animation View. And what we need to do is we pass in the animation we want to display. So this is from the raw resources. And it also gets a callback once it is initialized. And depending on the use case, you may not actually need this callback. And we will see why I added it in this example in a moment. But if we explore the composable uh, view, you can see that uh, we have a number of different optional uh, parameters that we can pass in. And uh, these are configurations for our animation. Uh, as an example, we have uh, a modifier that we can apply. We have a state machine name. We have uh, alignment, so the alignment of the animation, and then the fit of the animation. And if we start playing with these, we can actually uh, just experiment with them in code. So let's do that. Let's give it a new alignment, and let's say top center. And as you can see, we get a type mismatch. That's because uh, we are importing both uh, Rive that has an alignment and also Compose UI has an alignment. So uh, just to circumvent that, you can be explicit with the path that you want to use. So we'll just add the full library path and let's just do a hot restart or a restart, I should say. Top center doesn't exist. So that is because it's <laughs> Different in the right front time. Uh, top right, that's fine. And I can see the alignment is at the top right. Top right, but it's also not really the full right because we're actually displaying it to be in the full width. But as an alternative, if we wanted to, we could also do something else. We could give it a fit, and we can say that the uh, fit should be a uh, cover. And what cover does is it will take up all the available space in a semi-optimal way. Uh, well, not semi, definitely optimal. Uh, it, it tries to make sure that all of the space is covered. So if there is more height available than width, then it will um, ensure that the animation is stretched to fit all of the available heights, which means you do lose uh, out some, on, well, you could potentially lose out on some of the visibility of your animation. But in this example uh, that we're building for this uh, use case, this is actually kind of what we want. Um, but for now, let's just remove this and get it back to what it was. Okay, so our animation is playing. Now it gets to the point where we need to uh, advance our animation and essentially drive it a bit forward. But before we delve into that and go into the state machine, let me show you what you need to understand from a, a Jetpack Compose perspective to actually show uh, this uh, this view because we aren't uh, or at least at this stage at the time of recording please uh, see our docs um, and I'm sure we'll update the description for this video um, if we do have a, uh, a Jetpack Compose runtime library for Rive in the future it would be easier to implement I'm sure but for now we are making use of Android views and this essentially just allows you to uh, display a regular Android view with Jetpack Compose. And as you can see, what we do in this instance is we have this factory and in the factory, we get the context and using this context, we create a Rive animation view. And then we also call uh, also <laughs> to also perform the following. We set the Rive resource on the Rive animation view. And this set Rive resource is what we use these passed in parameters for as that is what is uh, configuring our animation. As you can see, we set the animation name or the ID of the animation, sorry, so that the that's the raw resource. And we also set the state machine name, the alignments and the fits. There are a number of different uh, attributes you can set. Uh, we don't need to set them in this instance, but uh, please see our documentation for additional information. And if we take a look at what the factory does, you can see uh, the block creating the view to be composed. Uh, so this is where we create the view, but we also have this update. So this is a callback to be invoked after the layout is inflated and upon recomposition to update the information states of the view. And we are using this to create another callback, which calls our on init that we pass in. So this on init takes in arrive animation and does nothing with that. It just uh, needs the 
uh, parameter. And we are going to be using this later on just as a reference to our view because uh, that will make it easy for us to actually set values on the view. And we'll see how to do that in a moment. So that is the getting started to just get a normal Rive animation working in Compose. The next step is for us to actually understand what we need to be updating from an animation perspective in relation to the pull to refresh experience. And for that, um, it will be best to actually just take a look at what the animation does. And if we go into the animate tab, and this is the pull to refresh uh, animation, if we click uh, play, you can see that this is essentially the exact same view that we're currently getting. Actually not. It's not the same because we're not passing in the number simulation. Okay, so this number simulation, that is the state machine that we are working with. Okay, so let's actually do that. If we scroll to the top here, and this is a little bit messy, but let's set the state machine and pass in number simulation. So now we're specifying that we want to use the state machine with that particular name. So let's restart. And now you can see this is similar, uh, or exactly the same as the current animation that we see here. And in this example, we have these inputs. And as you can see, we have a pull, which is a, a value that we can increase. And as it reaches close to 100, it reaches its final state. Once it reaches a value above 100, it goes into a new um, animation called Strength Loop, which is this uh, vibrating like it's ready to shoot the arrow. You have the option to control the animation by firing the advance uh, uh, trigger. So now it's in a new state, and it can be in this state for as long as it needs to. Uh, this is essentially the phase that new data is loading. And once you click advance again, it is finished. And now uh, you can just click advance again and you can see nothing happens. That is because this is in the final states of the animation. Uh, at this point, uh, after this animation is done, you essentially want to just uh, hide the view and new data should be loaded. So now that we've seen the inputs that we can use, um, let's go and explore the final implementation. Okay, so we have our example back and now it should make a little bit more sense as you can see, as it goes through these different states. And it's uh, hopefully not too intimidating to drive these states. And if we take a look at this custom pool refresh sample, this is a custom composable uh, view that uh, I had to make for this example that you can just copy paste and uh, modify as you need. Uh, in the beginning of this, we are just setting uh, the color for the system UI uh, view thing that's at the top. I forgot the name. System bar, I guess. And so you, this isn't relevant, but uh, from this section on, everything is relevant. So as you can see, we have a number of different variables, and these are controlling the value or progress state for our pull to refresh experience. And before we go more into this, uh, it's worth noting that we will be making use of the pull refresh um, dependency. So you will need to add this to your project as well. And also, if you take a look at the documentation that uh, Android has, they have a number of different examples showing you how to use this package. And um, I actually used this last example as is and just modified it. So if you want to create something from scratch, I do recommend using this uh, as a getting started point. And the code for this and what we have in this final version is uh, very similar. Um, the only things that are different is the animation, the drive animation part. So let's explore some of these variables that we'll be using. Uh, to begin with, we have this refresh scope that is a remember, a remember coroutine scope. And um, if you're not familiar with this, uh, please check out the documentation. But essentially this will just ensure that if the view were to leave the composition, then any of the uh, coroutines would be uh, canceled. Um, and uh, you'll see how we use this later on. But uh, the other things to take note of is this threshold. And as you can see, we use this with local density current. And here we are getting the uh, pixel value for our height that we pass in. And this height is a parameter that's given to the composable. 
as you can see here, height, which is the value of float. And this is going to be uh, determining how big the actual view is. As you can see in this instance, it is set to be 200. If we scroll to the top here, you'll see it's 200. If we were to increase that uh, to 300 or whatever, then it will be bigger, obviously. <laughs> and I can see it's it's a bigger view. Uh, I found that 200 is, is good for the samples that I've made. Okay, and continuing item counts, that is just the list of items that we have here. So all of these are just placeholder list views just for UI uh, decoration purposes. And um, we are updating this value once it, it reloads. Uh, again, this is the example that was used here, and you can take a look at that for a more simpler example. Then the current distance, this is the distance that we have dragged. So as we start pulling down, uh, there we go, uh, let's wait for it to finish. If we start dragging down, that current distance increases. And then finally, we have our anim animation. And this is the way we will be using that callback to actually just set our arrive animation view uh, to get a value or an instance of that so that we can drive our state machine. And then finally, progress, which is a value of current distance divided by the threshold. So the current distance uh, is a value in pixels that we pull, divide that by the threshold just to actually get the percentage uh, that it is completed. And then the scroll value is um, an animate floats estates, which will just animate the value. And we set the target value for that to be equal to the height times the progress. So this progress will be a value between zero and one. And we want to ensure that we get a value between, uh, actually it will be more than zero and one uh, because it eventually will be more than one. But uh, yeah, we want to set the target value to be that times the height. And then just some uh, spring values for animation purposes. And then finally a listener that will, once the animation finishes, it just sets uh, the animation back to uh, its default state. So we reset the animation and we also pause the animation. So to ensure it's not playing in the background. But you'll see that we actually uh, do additional steps at the bottom, which we'll get to, that actually hides the animation when it's not visible. So currently this animation will only ever be showing or be visible. Well, will only be drawn once the value of the pool is bigger than zero. If it's not bigger than zero, then it won't be visible uh, at all. It won't be drawn at all. But still, it's good practice to just reset our animation. And we'll also need to do that because um, uh, if we take a look at our editor over here, and just uh, play it. If we get to 100, uh, click advance, click advance. How do we reset our animation? And this is something that I'm sure Michael could have implemented easily. Uh, you know, just create a reset state that resets the animation to a base value, well, a starting value. But um, as an alternative, you can just, you know, reset the animation. And then you start it again from fre uh, fresh. And that may be the better way to do it sometimes. And that is exactly what we are doing in this instance. We are just resetting the animation, starting from scratch. And that will only happen once this value is equal to zero. So as an example, if we uh, pull this and leave it, once it reaches the top, the animation value will be zero, meaning we want to trigger uh, this, uh, this reset uh, that we see here. And um, okay, now, now we can actually take a look at the pull to refresh. And these methods, we're just gonna ignore them for now. And we'll take a look at the actual um, views. So to begin with, we have this box. And in this box, we are um, returning our composable arrive animation view. And this is the one that we explored earlier. This is what uh, displays the arrive animation. And as you can see, uh, we have this on and it's at the end um, that we get the callback that uh, passes in the arrive animation view. And we're just setting our local animation variable to be equal to the view. And the reason we do that is because we need this animation to be driving uh, our state machine. As, a, as an example, here we set the number state as we start pulling. And we'll explore this in a moment. 
And just uh, to refresh the animation we set is this value over here. Okay, and that is that, uh, literally that essentially to just display our animation. Um, but importantly, we can also, uh, well, we need to take notes that we need to apply some modifiers to uh, our right view. Essentially, we want to say how big we want the view to be and also where it should be displayed. And before we get into what these modifiers do, I think it's important to actually just continue and see what the full pull to refresh example does. And um, you can see that the next step uh, for us is that uh, we have the box and then uh, right on top of the box, we have a lazy column, okay? And this lazy column is these uh, list item UIs that we have here. They're just placeholders for UI purposes. And again, you can see that this also has a modifier. And um, this one will be easier to understand as uh, this uh, essentially makes sense because we have a scroll view and normally you wouldn't offset everything in a scroll view. Normally you'll just uh, drag, you know, uh, the view and then in Android at least, the default is like as you scroll down, uh, uh, indicator comes at, uh, shows on top of it. But what we want is we want to be offsetting the value of the entire scroll for this uh, as we pull down or the entire lazy column because we want to ensure there's enough space to actually display our arrive animation. And that's exactly what we're doing here. As you can see, we are setting the offset uh, for the Y value to be equal to the scroll value. And we fill the max available height and we set the background color uh, equal to this green. That's this value over here. And that is that essentially. Um, if we scroll up, you can see that all of this is uh, wrapped with a modifier uh, called pull refresh. And the pull refresh is the package that we saw here. And this takes in two methods, a on pull and on release. And if we take a look at their definitions, you can see both of them take in a float and they return a float. And this is where we have these methods that we'll, we will explore. But what is important to understand is essentially what we want is we want to get the value that we've pulled down. We want to determine what the offset should be for uh, the scroll uh, value in pixels. And we're using that as we saw to offset the whole lazy column but we also do that in the modifier for our Rive animation. This one is a little bit more complex. Um, essentially, we are setting the height equal to the height we want for our Rive animation, and that's going to be 200 in this example. And then we fill the max width and we align it to the top. Those are the, two, uh, the easy ones to understand. The offset's a little bit more complex, and that is because we want the offset to always be in the center. We want the animation to uh, be visible from the start. So as we scroll down, we want to be offsetting the animation so that it is always showing the center, even though the actual size of the animation is always going to be 200 in height. And that is what uh, this does over here. And we accomplish that by dividing the height by two and dividing the scroll value by two, and then also just clamping the value between a value, a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of uh, what the desired height should be. And that is what makes sure that the bottom lazy column scrolls further while the animation or the arrive animation stops at uh, a height of 200 or whatever the desired height might be. Okay, and then as the last steps, we just need to explore what happens in on pull and on release. So let's see what uh, on pull does first. We can scroll up. The on pull function takes in a float, which is the pull delta. So that is the uh, value between each callback, how far you've actually pulled it. Uh, so for example, if you pull really fast, the pull that delta will be big. If you go slowly, the pull delta will be really uh, low. And um, what we need to ensure is that the, uh, the pull delta is also zero if we are already refreshing. So what does that mean? If you uh, scroll down, scroll down, cool, 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 uh, we are increasing the pull delta. But once we already have our animation going, 
we don't want uh, to be able to refresh again. We don't want the delta to, or we don't want it to be able to, uh, you know, reinitiate the animation while it's already playing. And that's what this is doing. Um, if we are currently refreshing, and refreshing is a boolean that says that it's currently refreshing, then uh, we want to ensure that uh, we return zero. Otherwise, we need to uh, calculate what the new delta will be or the, va the passback value will be. And um, I'll let you explore this in your own time, but essentially we're just calculating what that should be. And you can also take a look at the example here. Then the important bit for us to understand the uh, Rive animation uh, side of things is that as we pull down, we need to set the value for our state machine. And we can easily do that by taking our animation, calling set number states, and then we pass in the name of the state machine. And we also pass in the input name, which in this instance is called uh, pool, as you can see here, pool. And then we specify the value. And the value will be the progress times 100. And that is what drives the initial uh, value. And as we release it, it goes back to zero. Okay, and then we have the on release as well. And this one is kind of similar, but in this instance, we get the velocity. So how fast it is moving. And we also return a float. And again, if we are uh, already refreshing, we just want to return zero. Otherwise, we do some calculations. And what we are doing is uh, we're checking to see if the current distance is bigger than the threshold. And if it is, we set the target value to be the threshold. And then finally, we call refresh. So please note that this is only being called once you release. So as an example, if we pull down and we release, then the current distance is not bigger than the threshold. But if we pull down far enough, and the threshold is going to be 200 in this instance again, if, it's, uh, if you pull down far enough, then cool, we call the refresh function. And the refresh function we'll explore in a moment. That's also something we had to make. Um, finally, we have, uh, we're have we making use of this refresh scope, uh, which is a current scene scope, and we call launch. And what this ensures is that uh, we just have a safe way to initiate this new animation where we provide the initial value and the target value. And um, we just set the uh, current distance. Um, so the current distance again is this value over here. So what this means is that once you let go, the target value should be zero. Um, and because we want to reset it to its, its all states. And that is exactly what this animation does. It just smoothly gets the value back to what it should be. Okay, so let's explore the refresh method and then we should be finished. Uh, in the refresh, uh, again, we use refresh scope launch and we set refreshing to true. So this is important as we've seen this uh, in a few instances where we need to ensure that we're not currently refreshing and redoing actions. And the first thing we want to do in the refresh state is to drive our arrive animation. And we do that by calling an input called advance. And that is this uh, trigger over here, advance. And what this will ensure is that um, the animation goes into a new state. So once we refresh, it goes into this state. It delays for uh, 1.5 seconds and then calls advance again and then delays for 1.5 seconds. So ideally, what you would probably want to do is have some future here. So some future to complete. Maybe you're loading data. Let's just type that. Loading data, for example. And once that is finished, the last delay is just there for uh, visual purposes. Depending on your animation, uh, you maybe wouldn't need this. But in this instance, we do want that last uh, few seconds just there so you can actually see the end of the animation. And then finally, once the refresh is done, we set the current distance uh, back to zero. And we set refreshing to false. And that is basically that, unless I missed something. But with that said, feel free to reach out to us on Discord if you do have questions regarding this implementation or any other pull to refresh or use case you have in mind. We are always happy to 
uh, help you out. And we are always interested to see what people create with Rive. We also have a few tutorials showing you how to implement this exact sample to refresh uh, experience with some of our other runtimes. So if you want to learn uh, how you can do that in those runtimes, be sure to go uh, see those videos. Thanks for watching.